So let's talk about the expenses of running an eBay dropshipping store, specifically the expenses of using this particular very popular software, which is AutoDS, versus some other options that you might want to do that might be less automated, but perhaps um, less expensive. Or you might actually just want to use AutoDS to have that full automation. It just really depends. But what I'm going to do here in this video is break down the expenses and I've put together a spreadsheet that you can actually get a copy of. And by entering the numbers in here, you're really going to get to actually see if it's going to make sense for you and uh, what the expenses and the expected profit results are. So first of all, to start off, we need to understand the expenses. Now, one thing they have is a subscription plan, right? They have subscription plans. And depending on the number of items that you are going to be working with, that's what determines how much your su subscription costs, obviously. Now, um, if you want a smaller plan, you can look at some of the smaller ones, but I'm looking at some of the bigger ones right now. For instance, a uh, 4K plan is 185, right? Uh, this 6K plan is 265, so on and so forth. Well, let's just say that uh, you wanted to go with a bigger plan. I'll just go ahead and just work with bigger numbers for this example. Let's just say I was going to do a 10K store, 10K listings at $399 per month, right? I'm going to drop that amount in here, $399. And you'll already see that it begins to populate over here the total expense of using AutoDS is 399 now, there's also the, the automatic orders. Now, you don't have to do automatic orders. You can do your orders manually, but let's say you wanted that option. I do believe it's an extra $10 for the add-on. Uh, I'm not sure if they still add the $10 uh, on this particular plan, but I know you definitely paid the $10 um, extra on some of these um, the lower uh, plans, right? It's about $10 extra. So, okay, fine. Uh, the other thing is we need to understand is auto order processing costs money. It's not included. So this uh, subscription plan does not include these automatic orders. You have from 20 to 50 cents per credit is the range. And as it turns out, it's 1.33 credits per order. And I looked that up right here. And it's right here. It's on AutoDS's site. They let you know that each automatic order is one credit, but also it's another additional 0.33 credits for the track and conversion. And I did not realize that at first. So that really does change things. Okay, that's 1.33 credits. So, um, and then if you're going to use the Fulfill by AutoDS service, I'm going to look at that too, where you have to, where they do all the orders and you do not use your own Amazon account. If you do that, what happens is that they're going to you're going to have to reload the balance and then they charge uh, a certain fee for using your card or for using PayPal. The fee ranges from three to five percent. So these are all the different uh, things we need to consider. So basically, the cost per credit is going to depend when you buy your credits. OK, it's going to depend on how much money you have up front to invest in credits. It could be 50 cents per credit or it could be 40 cents per credit, or it could be um, 32 cents per credit, depending on uh, how far in advance you buy the credits. They're not refundable, by the way. So keep that in mind. You won't ever get this money back if something happens and you can't use the credits. So keep that in mind. So um, let's say you're comfortable doing like maybe 100 credits at a time. Well, that would be 40 cents a credit, right? Um, so let's just say your cost is like 40 cents per credit. I'm going to type that in for the cost per credit. This is going to calculate 1.33 credits per order. So every order that you process automatically is going to be 53 cents total per order because it's 1.33 uh, credits for each order and each credit costs 40 cents. Just multiply those numbers. And now the question becomes, well, how many orders are you doing per month? Okay, so here's the thing. If you're doing... You have to really think about this. If you're running like a big store, like a, if you have like 10K, right, um, a store with 10K products, it was here somewhere, um, right? Let's say you had, let's say you have 50 orders a day, let's just say. That would be about 1,500 orders per month. At that point, your total processing cost is 
$798 to process orders because you're paying 53 cents for each order. So when you multiply it over many orders, it actually adds up to a significant amount of money. The total processing cost, multiplying the cost per order by the orders per month, being $798. Okay, now we can talk about Fulfill by AutoDS. If that's something that you decided to use, then you would have to consider this also. So if you're going to use, but let's, let's kind of leave that aside and talk about sales and profit. Now, your own sales and profit that you are actually pulling in is a big factor, obviously, because that's how you're going to be able to cover the cost of all the software, which is not cheap. So the average sale per order, that's what you have to know. Like, what are your sales, basically? First of all, from there, I'm going to reverse back and calculate um, profit from there. But let's say I'm doing, uh, let's say the average sale of things that I sell the sale, meaning what the sellers are paying, the revenue, is about like $20 per order, let's just say, on average, okay? Or if you want to go a little higher, we can even go a little higher, like 25 Remember, it's an average, so that means that I'm selling some products that are more expensive than that and some that are cheaper. Well, your average monthly sales would be like 37500 right? A lot in this case. Your fees, these are the fees that eBay, that eBay charges. If your fees are 13%, then... Your payout is, of course, less than that. You're getting paid about this much. The reason why I'm looking at this is because um, this is how we're going to calculate uh, your profit and your cost of goods. Your ROI, I can actually take the payouts and the ROI that you usually expect to make. And I from that, I can figure out what your cost of goods are. I can kind of go in reverse. Right. So if let's say you're expecting like a base ROI, like the common ROI of like 10%. Because, you know, with dropship and ROIs are not, it's not easy to make very large ROIs, specifically dropshipping from, say, Amazon, where everyone is doing it and, you know, everyone's using these softwares. Okay, so let's say like 10%. Well, that would make your cost, that means that for you to have, that means that your cost of goods would, you would expect your cost of goods to be 29,000, this number, okay, by reversing it, right? Your cost of goods would be about this much. All right, so your profit would be, uh, so we just kind of reverse it um, on that 10%, and that means that your profit is about 3263 Really, you could have skipped straight to profit. It's just 10% of um, ROI is 10% of what you get paid, in other words. So it's about, you know, this is just 10% of this, right? So that's 3263 for your profit. So at this point, I haven't even talked about fulfilled by order DS yet, but at this point right now, um, your profit before expenses is three thousand two hundred sixty-two fifty that I got from down here. Here it's rounded off. Here it's not. Uh, in fact, what I'm going to do is actually just remove the decimal places. We don't really need to be that exact. So three thousand two hundred sixty-three for the profit before expenses. The auto DS expense is like. 1207 as you can see the profit afterwards two thousand fifty six dollars okay all the math is being done here by the formulas it's very simple math just subtraction in this case right uh so you can see you know a significant uh portion of your profit is going to auto ds i actually calculated the percentage here very simply taking the uh auto ds expenses and dividing it by my actual initial earned profit so you can see that auto ds um, expense is 37% of my the profit that I'm making. So I'm taking 37% of my profit and I'm giving it to them, right? According to this, to, to this, right? That's what you would be doing, all right, with these particular settings and these particular numbers that we've put in here, right? So, um, you know, at that point you decide, well, if that's, you know, what you want to do or not. Obviously, you know, everything costs money. Clearly, but it's just a matter of um, what you want to do. Now, if you wanted to use the Fulfill by Auto DS service, all right, what's going to happen is every time that uh, you have orders incoming and you want to use the service, you're going to want have to reload uh, at least 50. They don't let you reload $20. You have to put f at least $50 on there, right? So you're going to reload the fees each time, uh, whatever up to whatever amount. But the problem I have here is this right they for credit cards you see that it's a five percent fee 
they have some other choices but they all have um a fee if you use paypal it's uh still a five percent fee Payoneer is the only thing that's a little cheaper which is a three percent fee so basically you're gonna have be charged any, anywhere from three to five percent of a fee it doesn't sound like a lot but watch what happens remember uh that we have what's called cost of goods keep in mind this is your cost of goods you are putting your cost of goods onto the auto ds and platform and then they're using it to do the orders for you that's fulfilled by auto ds so if you drop a reload fee percentage of five percent in here if your cost of goods remember that's they're adding that fee on to to your cost of goods by uh you loading the money so that's a whole nother 1500 in this case on top if if your cost of goods is thirty thousand, that's going to be fifteen hundred dollars all right so that's significant and as you can see it would significantly increase your expense um in this case from auto ds and we can see drastically that the profit has fallen uh now even below one thousand in this particular example and that also the percentage of your initial profit is so much higher they are now account for 82 percent of your expenses and see the tricky thing is that you would not ever know this or really realize it until you actually put these numbers in and break it down this way you would not really realize as you are loading this and paying this fee you would not really realize um how large the impact is on your profit until you break it down with this calculator and actually calculate everything using realistic numbers right now if you're running a smaller uh store i did use a big store because it, it kind of was nice to work with bigger numbers here give me a little a bit of room to work with but go ahead and put in your smaller numbers even on a smaller um subscription plan okay as we see here and um you know quite honestly i mean um if you're going to try to use automated services with a smaller store it's going to be worse because your profit is lower on a smaller store generally right you have less listings you just don't sell it's a numbers game you just you get more sales on bigger stores you get more profit so you probably in the beginning would want to stay away from too much automation if your store is very small so just something to consider right but i'm just showing you the breakdown again you can always get a copy of this now if you decided that you didn't want to completely do so much automation are there any other things you can do um there are other things i mean for one there's another software um that you can use now skew grid uh not skew uh skew grid would be that uh software for monitoring however um honestly uh auto ds the thing that's powerful about this is the ability to list bulk listings large number a no, large number of listings so if you're running a big store and you want to upload 500 listings to a thousand listings uh directly from amazon you can do that and that's powerful so you might still at least want to be able to list products but as far as some of the monitoring i have to talk about it more in some other videos i have some other uh options that you can think about for monitoring using spreadsheets specifically google sheets and also skew grid the combination of the two it's going to be less money and a little more work but basically um you can put products into skew grid as you see i have amazon products in here now you can pull the prices as well as the stock you see these are out of stock the red the green is in stock and you can then take this data and bring it into a google sheet and you can then kind of uh ebay makes it easy now to upload your inventory and stock um your prices and all that so you could always do that and then again i have to explain it more in another in other videos uh there's also an api option for skew grid and i've already written the code where if you have a skew grid api account you will be able to um put data directly into skew grid with the api and pull back out the product data right away back into a google sheet so if you don't know how to code you'll be able to use my a library of create i haven't released it like today but i do have a library for that for skew grid api that you could actually employ uh for your own personal api account so um that's like another option just to put that out there so the other little things you could do but you're gonna have to use spreadsheets and um other software and then for automatic orders that's kind of a tough one but 
there are other things you can do. Like I'm actually using a tool right now, literally just um, last night. It's a Selenium ID. It's like a, basically what it does, it actually records your actions on a website. And you can actually run uh, at least partially. Um, and you could actually run completely, but I'm going to do it partially. Uh, the process of ordering a product. You give it the ASIN, you give it um, name, phone number, whatever you want from, um, and then it's going to run the actions. You have to first do the actions on the website and record them. That's something, again, I'll have to demonstrate in another video uh, or explain more in other videos. And you can run uh, that, and that will just save some of the manual work of actually clicking Add to Cart and actually clicking Add a New Address and all of that. Save some of the physical work. So at least when you do your manual orders, um, it doesn't feel like quite as much work, right? So those are some um, other things that you can, you know, substitutions you can do uh, to help you out instead of having all the expenses of automation. So anyway, that's basically it. If you want a copy of this spreadsheet, I actually might put it in as part of uh, spreadsheets for eBay sellers. I have now like a bundle together my Google Sheets, primarily Google Sheets. It might be Excel Sheets in there too. For eBay, I have some for Amazon as well. And you can always look at the description of the video for a link where you can actually just go get access to that Drive, uh, Google Drive folder, and you can just get the uh, whole folder and access whatever you need from there. And that's basically it. So again, just consider, make sure to do this math. It's very important to really see the numbers and how this these expenses are going to affect you and what you can handle. And then maybe just consider some of these other options that are out there, uh, which I will try to make content in the future to help present some of those other things a little more clearly. And that's about it, uh, Mr. Mark. Thank you for watching the video. You can always leave comments, suggestions, or questions below. Uh, you can also contact me if you've got my information. Definitely check the links to see what you can download from me. And I look forward to hearing from you or seeing you around in another video.